Show me any believer who would have invested a major portion of his work exploring these dimensions of knowledge. I show you one who it will be impossible to be a weak believer. Let me give you six of them very quickly. Number one, according to scripture, especially the Pauline epistle, we are taught that these six foundational, I'm not just talking of doctrine like Hebrews 6, no. No, I'm not talking of foundational doctrine. I'm talking that in your pursuit of knowledge, that means if you see a believer now who is saved and tells you that I want, I want to act to contend for spiritual knowledge, if you want to guide that person, at first, you restrict that person's pursuing knowledge to these six dimensions. Are you ready? Number one, that you must know God and Jesus, his son. This, according to the Pauline epistle, is the correct protocol for approaching spiritual knowledge. You must know God and then Jesus, his son. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Please write it. We're walking this. There's so much to cover. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. That means at the point where you begin to pursue the knowledge of God, you are truly having spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. In 1 Peter chapter, I mean in um, Daniel 11, 32, popular scripture, the B part says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. There is an advantage to knowing God. I like Ephesians 1, 15 to 19. This is Paul again. This is our Paul again. Mentoring the church in Ephesus. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all saints, verse 16, reading to 19, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer, 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, watch this now, the spirit of, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him not the knowledge of it the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding verse 18 says being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power so six dimensions of knowledge when you want to pursue genuine spiritual growth and maturity you must know god and jesus christ his son number two you must know yourself in light of who christ is you must know yourself in light of who christ is psalm 49 and 20 very powerful scripture the bible says man that is in honor and understand it not is like a beast that perisheth. Hallelujah. Second, only to knowing God, it is important that in pursuing growth and maturity, as revealed by Scripture, you must know yourself in light of who God is. Hallelujah. In First Peter chapter two and verse nine, very powerful Scripture, it tells us that we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him that has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. When you read Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 6, just write for sake of, um, um, for sake of time. Paul took out time there to begin to give us a very theological background as to the implication. I have taught you here that from a theological standpoint, every time you discuss man with respect to what Christ has done, there are only two things that become the basis of your discussion. Number one is our oneness with Christ, the implication of our oneness. And number two, our positional advantage. Are we together now?
on account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ, man has been brought into oneness. The Bible says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. And then Paul helped us to understand our positional advantage. That that word together or together with Christ is a very profound prophetic description of the believer's position now in light of what has happened. So you need to know who you are in light of who Christ is. Number three, you need to know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program. I have taught you this. It's very important. You need to know your place. Your relevance is in your ability to keep and maintain your position. The provisions that are accorded your life are with respect to knowing your place. It's very important. You must know your place in God's program. You must know your place in destiny. Luke 4, 16 and 17, Jesus in the temple reading the messianic prophecy that was about him the bible says he found where it was written concerning him and then at the end of that rendition he said today is this scripture fulfilled in your ears hebrews 10 and 7 says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god hallelujah it's very very important every believer must be trained to know your place in God's de in destiny and in God's prophetic program number four that the second the fourth um, <clears throat> dimension of knowledge is that you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom this is very important you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom Job 38 33 to 35 write it for reference Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? A discussion between God and Job. Psalm 82 and verse 5, popular scripture here. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Matthew 13, 11, Jesus is still teaching. For it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. The kingdom operates using a modus operandi. There is a pattern. There is a principle. And every time you want to see the glory of God revealed, there is um, a mandate upon you that you must know the ways of God. Number five, what is the fifth dimension of knowledge? If you must press into an excelling spiritual life, you must understand man. As the highest of God's creation and then you must understand the world system the cosmos it is not enough to understand the principles of the kingdom you must understand man as the zenith the highest of God's creation and then you must understand the cosmos this is important when we discuss this we considered Psalm 8 from verse 1 to 6 remember Psalm 8 1 to 6 Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name, he says, all of that. When I consider the works of your hands and all of that, when we get to verse 5, he now says, What is man? Or verse 4, what is man that thou art mindful of him, not the son of man that thou visitest him? I hope we're still together. I'm showing you that if you want to explore your spiritual growth, it is important that you follow this sequence. Otherwise, something will be lopsided as far as your spiritual understanding is concerned. You must know man because this is the world of men. Psalm 115 verse 16. The Bible says, The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. If you must excel in the cosmos, you need to understand the world of men. Hallelujah. In fact, in Matthew 10, 16, I believe, Jesus was teaching them. And you notice when Jesus began to teach, if you study the Beatitudes theologically, Jesus began to teach them relating the kingdom with and contrasting it with the cosmos. There were times where he would teach them things that were largely eternal and spiritual, but in many instances, he would now delve to help them understand the cosmos. This was one of such discussions. Behold, I send you forth as sheep 
in the midst of wolves he says be ye therefore wise as serpents all through scripture a serpent has always been associated with evil satan the devil are we together now and here jesus is saying that you need to borrow the wisdom of the serpent and the character of the dove if you must excel in the cosmos very strange teaching for the simple information that you are a sheep in the midst of wolves he says there are two dimensions of wisdom and approach you must have you need to be as wise as a serpent and you need to be as harmless as a dove and the only place in scripture where you learn the wisdom of the serpent is egypt you will have to go to egypt to learn the wisdom of the serpent hallelujah And the Bible says, as harmless as a dove. So number six, very quickly. What is the final dimension of knowledge that the believer must have? You must know your adversary, the devil. I'm doing a recap for those of us who have been following the series. But this is important. I need to say this so you understand what I'm explaining today. You must know your adversary, the devil. The devil is not your friend. No, sir. The devil is not a confidant. The Bible calls him the thief, John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief, a description that Jesus himself gave. Many bad names Satan is called. He's called a murderer, he's called an accuser of the brethren, he's called a thief in this case, that he comes except he does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. First Peter chapter 5, Apostle Peter was teaching us in verse 8 and 9. He says, Be sober. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, he says, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Whom resist? It is within your power. Let me tell you this, no matter what you know, as far as spiritual information is concerned, if you do not understand Satan, and the dark world, the demonic kingdom, you will be incapacitated in ways you cannot imagine. Are we together now? Yes. When I was discussing this, I taught you that as an expert, when they teach you about accidents, the goal is not for you to go and die in a car crash, but you can never be called a professional. There is a whole course on plane crashes when you study aviation and you are being trained to become a professional pilot. They simulate many kinds of plane crashes and they teach you how to circumvent them. It is on account of that you are certified as a professional pilot. Are we together? There are many believers in an attempt to remain positive have ignored the reality of the dark world. Jesus himself it revealed many aspects of Satan. It was Jesus. In fact, our understanding about the operation of Jesus as far as the gospel, uh, operation of Satan, as far as the gospel is concerned, was revealed by Jesus himself. And then Paul came and structured the satanic kingdom. And he said, do not be unaware of the wiles or the devices of the devil. Do not be ignorant, he says. So you must know God. You must know yourself in light of who Christ is. You must know your place in destiny and God's prophetic program. You must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. You must understand man and the cosmos. And then you must understand your adversary, the devil.